uh, when you consider, the other thing you consider is energy density. Remember the little piece of uranium I hold up is an American's energy life for a decade. Well, you can't match that with wind and solar in any way. The, and you can't match that with fuels, taking a cubic mile of oil, portion it out to individual people, you know, per year you can't mention, can't match that. Because nuclear power is a million times more energy dense on a pound for pound basis than any fuel, more than a million times more energy dense than any thing like solar or wind. Because wind, remember, is second order derived energy from the sun. It's the effect of the sun heating up the atmosphere and creating wind currents and so forth and currents in the ocean and, and interacting with the wind and wind interacting with the ocean and so forth. So wind energy is a very low energy density source and it's, it's so low in, in energy density you would say, why bother trying to use it? And as an engineer or a scientist, that's what you would say. But if you're getting a subsidy like Warren Buffett gets a production tax set credit for his investments in wind farms uh, and you don't care about the environment when you're not a scientist or engineer but you just want to make money then okay it's fine in fact in 2014 Warren Buffett gave a inter interview in which he said they wouldn't do wind farms without the production tax credit because as he said it makes no sense and so that basically the point they have to get across to these folks who actually think there's such a thing as, as renewable energy or that it's wind and solar are green is that it makes no sense. It makes no sense to pick the worst, lowest energy density sources. It requires 2,000 tons of raw material to make one windmill. And here, we don't just dream, we make history by nearly doubling our clean energy as part of our 100% renewable vision. With this it requires 2,000 tons of raw material to make one windmill. One windmill that will deliver one megawatt of power averaged over a year. Ore for iron ore, coal, because you can't make steel without coal, limestone, crushed, kiln to make concrete, rock, all the stuff that goes into a, a single windmill is about 2,000 tons per average megawatt ever delivered. And all that 2,000 tons is processed with fossil fuel. Everything is processed with fossil fuel, transported to the site and erected with fossil fuel. Right? So one of the great best videos I, I have used with people is a promotional video from Mid-American uh, Energy, which makes large windmills, and it's a video of them constructing one from the ground, from the nice flat prairie in North Dakota or somewhere, uh, digging it up, putting in this huge concrete base, erecting these, buying, buying these huge sections of the tower from China and shipping them over and er transporting them to the, where the base is and erecting it and going up 400 feet. And really, it's, it's exhilarating to see the whole thing. Huge cranes, bigger than any crane you'd ever seen, putting it up. <clears throat> and then you think, well, what, are, why, what have I wasted all this material and land on something that's only going to give me some energy, a little bit of energy when the wind blows? Right? And it's always going to be there. It's going to be there for our descendants to look at and say, boy, these people were stupid. And now we got to recycle all this crap. And we're never going to be able to dig up the concrete that they put down there under our prairie soil, right? It's going to be there forever. So, you know, it's, it, the whole thing is uh, an example of how human thinking can be distracted.